Welcome to IDST 101, Introduction to Indigenous Studies. My name is Stephen Wall. I'll be your facilitator for this class during this semester. I'm here on faculty at the Institute of American Indian Arts. I also serve as the department chair for Indigenous Liberal Studies. I've been here at uh, IAIA full-time since 2006, and prior to that I served as an adjunct for a couple of years. My educational background is that I have a degree in anthropology from Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado, and I also have a law degree from the University of New Mexico. In my previous lives, uh, before coming to, uh, to, to IA, I served as, uh, for 12 years in the Mescalero Apache Tribal Court as prosecutor and judge. I also served at Tono Autum for almost three years as um, behavioral health coordinator there in the, in the health department at that time. I've also worked as a consultant uh, with Indian tribes and communities, mainly in areas of governance and juvenile justice. Um, I'm also an artist. Um, over the years, I've participated in the uh, Santa Fe Indian Market as well as another, a group of other uh, native art shows. And um, the, the art always remains one of my primary interests in life. In terms of my personal background, I'm a member of the Minnesota Chippewa tribe, White Earth. And basically what that means is that my ancestors come from that part of the country. In fact, it was my grandmother who was from that area. My grandfather was from the Cattaraugus Reservation in New York. But I grew up <clears throat> here in New Mexico. My mother was working for the Mescalero Apache tribe where she met my father who was, well, actually my mother was working for the BIA and my father was working for the tribe and that's where they met and I was born in Roswell, New Mexico, me and the aliens. I was actually born a couple of years after the aliens visited the Roswell area. And so um, that's basically where I came from. Uh, my idea, or my very first uh, memories of being Indian in a sense is what I saw and experienced as a child at Mescalero and, and growing up there and then going back to serve as their, as their judge and prosecutor. Um, <clears throat> this, what we're going to do for the next few minutes is talk about this class. Now, this class, the uh, Introduction to Indigenous Studies, uh, is, a, not, is kind of a survey course uh, where we take a look at the general issues facing Indigenous people, and we don't limit ourselves to North America. We also include materials from South Africa. We include some materials from Asia and occasionally we find things from Mexico and South America that we also use in the class. And we talk about these issues in kind of in a very general sense because there's a lot to cover. But basically we'll be talking about identity, first of all. We'll be spending some time on the idea of self-determination. We'll be looking uh, for a while at education. Then we're gonna spend about seven or eight weeks looking at the concept of indigenous knowledge and how indigenous knowledge is applied in a variety of things, whether it's looking strictly ecologically or looking at various institutions of the community, such as justice and health and food and things of this sort. And then if time permits, <clears throat> we will be looking uh, at aesthetics as we try to figure out what is Indian art. Now, one of the things um, that this is a very challenging class. This class is challenging for, for two reasons. First of all, it's, it's hard in terms that there's a lot of reading. There's weekly questions and blog entries. There's essays and there's a final paper. But it's also hard for people in a personal level beyond just meeting those uh, assigned uh, activities of the class. First of all, and especially for an online course, is the question of personal discipline. Do you have the ability to focus your time and energy on this course? And while well, it may present a particular issue for people in online course, the same issue exists in the face-to-face -face course. There's a question of adequate preparation. Have you actually done the readings and are you prepared for class? And are you prepared to do the assignments? Are you prepared to make the time commitment for the class? A lot of times people come in and take, take this class and this is, um, something that happens primarily in the face-to-face -face class, but it could certainly happen in the online version, is that people come in, 
thinking that they don't really have to have read the material. Um, and, that, and, the rea and the reality is that that's not true. So you have to make a, a certain amount of time commitment to this class. And in most academic courses, the, the ratio of in-time or in-class materials, and for those of you online, you're looking at um, time you spend looking at the, um, at the um, lectures and the assigned, uh, assigned readings and so forth, you're still supposed to spend about three hours a week for every credit hour on that class. I think that's the, the right, the right um, uh, ratio. But the point is that there's a, a lot of time to be involved in this class. And then the last of the personal challenges is that for many people, this class does threaten some personal beliefs that you may have held dear, your family may have held dear, um, your community may have held dear. And I'm, this class is not designed to, to make people um, uh, believe in anything in particular other than uh, what they choose to believe in, but there are times when long-held personal commitments might find themselves being challenged. Now the expectations that I have of you within this course are fairly simple. There's actually only three. One is that you become very familiar with the syllabus. And the syllabus, if you haven't already located it, is on the left-hand side of the, uh, of the, of the uh, homepage for the, uh, for the class. And in that syllabus, you'll find everything from grading standards to the, cor uh, to the course calendar, um, expectations in terms of academic integrity, um, issues related to uh, disability and access. Also, how to get in touch with me. The second expectation I have is that you will do the assignments and complete them on time. Now, um, one of the things that happens in this class, I've found out, I've, I've taught this class uh, quite a number of times, is that for, if you do every assignment, you'll get a good grade. I'm not gonna guarantee you an A, but you will get a good grade. If you don't do all of the assignments, then you start running into problems. And so one of the expectations is I'd like for you to complete your assignments. The third expectation is I want you to ask questions if you're unsure of anything. The syllabus has my email address. And uh, if you have any questions about anything related to this class, please contact me as soon as possible to avoid what could be a little question snowballing into a real problem. Whether it's, I'm not too sure how to, you know, I don't know where to find the, uh, the final assignment. And uh, it's already midterm and people are already turning in parts of the final assignment. And where do I find it? Well, you need to let me know that as soon as possible so that we're not looking at two weeks before school's out and you still don't know where the final assignment is. So ask questions anytime you have a question. Be sure to ask me if you're unsure of anything.